So, bilingualism and music education as the title of my topic, but there is a secret subtitle that is the Turkish German Parents' Perspective. That is actually my PhD topic, or that was my PhD dissertation. Uh, luckily, I finished, but I'm going to try to summarize it. Before I start with the research itself, a short story. I started learning English when I was a child, back then in the primary school. And I have to admit something, I wasn't very good at that. I was struggling, my grades were really low. I didn't quite understand what was happening. And then something happened that kind of changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> this my experience, yes. So I love this music. I was still a child. I love this music. I listened to it and I sang it each and every day. At some point, I got very curious. I got myself a dictionary, a real dictionary on the internet back then. So I started translating the songs and I realized those vocabulary that I learned through the songs, I had never forgotten them. And something strange happened. My grades in the school started getting higher. My teachers were amazed. And soon I became the best English student in the classroom. Years later, when I was writing my master thesis, I realized the relationship between music and languages might indeed have influenced me back then. So what is that? What is that similarity? They both are very different from each other, music and languages, but they both also have a lot in common. Both music and language have rhythm, they both have melody, they both have a structure, and they both have cultural features. Also, the studies show us there might be some overlapping brain areas when they, when the both domains are processed. When we look at the education, the studies show us the kids who learn languages through music, they learn or they have better skills in pronunciation, they have wider vocabulary, they might even have better reading skills when they are reading music notes. And what happens when it comes to bilingualism? Both musicians and bilinguals have something in common that we can talk, we can call it dual tasking or task switching or multitasking, right? Well, as musicians, you play something, you listen to the others at the same time, you're sometimes reading it. And as bilinguals or multilinguals, when we use one of the languages, we're constantly actually suppressing the other ones, which I do right now, and I believe most of you do it as well. And one study showed us both bilinguals and musicians have enhanced brain functions compared to the non-bilinguals or non-musicians. Another study shows us the, the infants bilingually growing kid, children might be a little bit more sensitive to music, to pitch. That means they might be a little bit more talented in music. At the beginning of my speech, I said there's a Turkish-German perspective, right? So let's go into this. Uh, why Turkish-German community? First of all, I'm coming from Turkey myself. I've been living in Germany for eight years now, or nine years now. And this community is the largest ethnic minority group in Germany currently. When I first came to Germany, I heard a lot of complaints about the language skills of this community. All Turkish people can never learn German properly, or they switch back and forth all the time. And uh, unfortunately, there is some bias about it. There is a study that tells us, that, uh, that analyzed the media, German media, and they said most of the Turkish people, Turkish immigrants in Germany, are portrayed that they're lacking uh, language skills in the German media. Well, of course, we know this is not always the case. There are a lot of different examples. There are people with excellent language skills. There is such and such. But what we are sure about is there, is some, there might be some problems, some issues in the education system. Uh, Apotoy says one, almost one quarter of the students with an immigration background in Germany cannot even have a basic secondary school qualification uh, because of their language skills. So I put all of these information together when I was starting my PhD and I asked this question, can we actually use music education to enhance Turkish children, Turkish German children language, bilingual language skills? 
I was very naive, I guess, when I started the PhD, because soon after I realized this question is way too big for one study to answer, but you can have a look at the different aspects of the topic, which I did with my study as well. I wanted to look at the home environment, what happens at home, what do the parents do, how do they think about bilingualism, how do they think about music, if they ever use music for languages or not. That was my main interest. So my research question was, what are the Turkish German parents' beliefs and practices regarding music education and bilingualism? So that is a qualitative case study. I interviewed a lot of parents in Munich with different social, economical and educational backgrounds, very different families, from single moms to very traditional families to punk families, so called. And I analyzed all of these answers. I interviewed them at least for one hour each, and all the answers, I put them together, and I found some commonalities, some similarities. Let's have a look at them. What are the Turkish German parents believe some practices regarding music education? Positive beliefs. Everybody believes music education is good. They should get some music lessons to their children. However, not everybody actually does that. And I realized those who have less music education were a little bit more shy about getting lessons to their children, which correlates with another study from Australia. So as a parent or caregiver, the more music edu education you have, the more educated you are, the more you are given it, I guess, to your children as well. The second thing I found out was Turkish music and emotions. Somehow all the parents are interviewed to talk about it, but the funny thing is they talk from a different perspective of the same topic. So those who identify themselves as a Turkish person, even though they were born in Germany, they said, oh, Turkish music, it's emotional, so nice, I love it. And those who had Turkish backgrounds but still identify themselves as Germans, they said, oh, Turkish music is too emotional. So I guess this is telling us something that how we culturally define ourselves might have an effect on how we also perceive the music or the arts. And what happens when it comes to bilingualism? The first thing is perfectionism. I asked the parents, do you think your child is bilingual? They said no, even though they were indeed bilingual. Because they thought bilingualism is being able to speak two languages perfectly switching back and forth all the time, speaking about everything without any problem. But it's not the definition of bilingualism. It is very normal to have one dominant language and one non-dominant language that might even be just the understanding level. I realize this kind of lacking of information calls them a lot of pressure to the parents and they put this pressure onto their children. And difficulties. We, we think in a bilingual family maybe it's not very challenging. You speak one language, others, oh sorry, others speak the other language and then your kid is bilingual, so what is that? But in the real story, in the real life, there are a lot of things actually that we don't realize or we don't see. For example, one parent told me that her German is not good, she speaks Turkish with her child, which is good, and dad speaks German. But at some point, the child stopped talking to mom because she didn't want to speak in Turkish. And the mom said, I don't want to use my own communication with my child. For me, communication is more important than her language skills, her Turkish language skills. So even though I don't feel comfortable with German, I speak now German with my child. And I was very curious if the parents were somehow doing something with music in order to support this bilingualism, even though, you know, unconscious level. Uh, there weren't many things happening, I have to be honest, but uh, I called these baby steps. There were a lot of stuff that were happening in, as I said, an unconscious level without them knowing. For example, music for the weak language. One parents told me that her German was perfect, but she said, you know, Turkish is my love language, that's why I talk to Turkish with my child. Uh, but she wanted that her child somehow learns German as well, so she used music, she, they sang together. And that's the reason how her child could start learning German. A lot of parents told me their the children said how they got better because they're listening to songs in different languages. Pronunciation, one parent told me that her child could not um, pronounce one specific sound in Turkish, I think that was Arab, and, uh, and then she, she realized that he could uh, pronounce it when he was singing, so she worked on that and eventually they kind of fixed 
this issue with music. After the, after the study, I realized the interest was super huge. They were very interested, but I never knew what was actually happening afterwards. They were, yeah, oh, music, I love this, and I love it. And then I never knew if they were indeed doing something. So I gave them a, a small present after this study. This music CD contains two uh, bilingual songs, actually. First, sung in German, and then sung in Turkish. Exactly the same melody, same instrument, same meaning, just two languages. They translated everything. I gave the CD and then in two weeks I sent them a questionnaire just to measure if they were actually using it and the answer was yes. They all said they were they were willing to, they were they were very happy about it and they would be willing to use it in the future as well. However, some parents told me, you know, says so Gimon, like it's translating songs doesn't sometimes work, right? Like it's, it's kind of superficial because we're, we, the, the Germans and the Turkish people, they don't talk about the same things. And I was like, oh yeah, what do you mean about that? And she said this. German songs are about the activities. They go out more often, you know? Germans are always in the mountains. <laughs> when it comes to us, it is more emotional. It's like my mom's song. It's a very traditional uh, or very well-known children's song in Turkey. So I guess she got right. At some point, translating could also not be enough because language is all about perceiving the things, right? So I thought there should be definitely some room for also traditional music, folk music, or, or well-known children music as well, if you want to support this bilingualism. So in conclusion, I analyzed all these questions. It, there were much, many more answers. And I realized there was a pattern. All the parents, all about bilingualism and music, they all had positive views, but there were some difficulties or issues in the practice. They had somehow only a certain level of knowledge. There was lack of theoretical knowledge about this bilingualism and about music, and there were a lot of cultural influences. So take away message, what does it tell us? Yes, music might indeed help to learn languages or even it can support by humanism. But just to believe in that will probably not be enough. There is a theory actually about that, a huge theory about that in education science. Parents' positive beliefs is not enough. Yeah, you know what? Music helps languages, so let's just play it. It's not enough for the children to actually benefit from this connection. But if you support your beliefs with actually being in the action, putting the putting it in the practice, if you take the cultural features into that account, and if you keep educating yourself with theoretical knowledge, it's probably going to be a positive outcome as children's learning. So after I did this study, or during this study, I also worked with children, with bilingual or multilingual children. And I realized I mentioned about children songs from different countries is a lot of fun. So that's what we're going to try here. You can see how you do the bees, uh, the animals actually, all the animals. What is the sound of the bee? Can you tell? Yeah, how do you say that in your language, for example? Buzz, yeah. English people say buzz. German say zoom, Turkish people say this, I heard the Russians say we. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, bees do not change their languages, it's all our perception. So I, ma I matched up these three language, three songs, and I'd like to play it for you. <laughs>
this, this, this PhD because it's published as a book. Whoever wants to go deeper and order it or 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 download it, buy it. Uh, <laughs> and I found that this music and multilingualism you know, page. I tried to post some stuff about the topic. Whoever has an interest in other words. Thank you so much for. It was by far the best ending of uh, our talk. So, so far. So, far. So, <laughs> so, we have some time for the questions. So, please raise your hands. Do you have any questions? Oh, there is a question. What do you actually mean by learning? Where do you actually say that I'm just going to come to learn? Sorry, could you? Uh, she said, why do you think learning? educating themselves should actually have. It's a good question. Like in the example of bilingualism, they didn't know it was very normal to have one dominant language and one non-dominant language, even for the children who grow up bilingually. They all thought bilingualism is having perfect, perfect language skills in, in two levels, in two languages, which is like the 70s period. Nowadays, we know that is most of the rare case. So, if you don't know that, you kind of have to pressure yourself, and you put this pressure to your child, which is not a good outcome at the end. So these kind of love, there are a lot of different, like, the detailed messages that I couldn't answer. That was one of the common patterns. So, we have time for some more questions? Mm -hmm. So, there is no questions? Okay. This is, this was a great talk. Thank you. Thank you so much.